Dear David Cross, my name is Bob Odenkirk. Although we have never met, I would like to do a TV show with you. Please respond. Signed, a stranger. Dear David Cross, obviously you don't take me very seriously. Have I offended you? You big fairy. Now have I offended you? Let me know. Bob Odenkirk. Dear Globochem, I recently had an unpleasant experience with a package of creamy doodles. Please send me as many free products as possible. Love, David Cross. Dear David, never writes back and now he's a dead man, Cross. How does it feel to be a dead man? Praying to God won't help. Your killer, Bob Odenkirk. Hey, Bob, what's up? Oh, hey there, Tom. Say, could you do me a favor? I haven't had a chance to mail these letters. They've been piling up. Could you, uh, could you take care of that for me? Yeah, no problem. Oh, thank you very much. <gasps> Dear Globochem, somebody is trying to kill me. Please send me as many free products as possible. Love, David Cross. Oh, sure. How ugly could she be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! Hello! <laughs> Hotsy Mama! Woo! Well, welcome to Mr. Show. I'm Bob Odenkirk. And I'm David Cross. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, uh, David, what do you say uh, we start with the carnival sketch? Okay. All right. <laughs> this doesn't seem very fair. <laughs> kisses, kisses, 75 cents, get your kisses. Hey, homo, how about a kiss? Uh, I'm not gay. Oh, yeah? Prove it. What, by kissing you? Sure. If you can kiss me and not get aroused, that means you're not gay. Uh, oh, I guess. There, see? You call that a kiss, you big queen? How about some tongue? Uh, no, why? Well, a real man who's confident in his heterosexuality wouldn't let that bother him a bit. He'd French like there's no tomorrow. I don't know. Hey, everybody, look at the big girl. Where's your purse, ma'am? Shut up, okay. <laughs> All right, and take the dress off, too. I want to feel while I'm hey, at Hey, stop it, man, this is wrong. I can't believe this, Pa. I'm sorry, lady. You know, geez. Bob, I could have done this part. I don't know, David. I, I just didn't think you found the character's voice. What character? She's playing me. Oh, I know what this is about. It's about the kiss. Bob, men can kiss. <laughs> men can get married. I mean, they even have a pill now that lets men make love to each other. <laughs> Here, watch this. It's called a gay porno film. Warning, the following gay porno film has not been altered in any way for television viewing. In fact, if anything, it's been made more gay. Warning, please disregard the previous warning. The following gay porno film has been re-altered to make it even more gay than it was. In fact, now it may be too gay for some gay people.
Warning, the following film has been re re-edited for television. It is no longer gay porno. Now it's a scene about a couple on their honeymoon. Jeez, honey, I didn't think you'd be pissed. This is our honeymoon. It's about us, our new life together. Yeah, well, our new life is just an extension of the lives we were leading. I mean, come on, I love you. I love you, too. Hey, Jerry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, man. They don't have Sega Genesis on board, only Nintendo. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just so glad to be here with you guys. I love you both. I really do. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you, Jerry. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, mm, I do. Well, I do too. Wait, no, I do even more than that to you guys at the wedding today. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, that shit was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I gotta take a crap. Ooh. Todd, hand me that hustler. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Sure, buddy. You know, I thought this was going to be okay, but it's not. It's not okay. Oh, well, don't worry, honey. You'll get used to it. Even sailors get sick the first few hours out. No. It's just the boats. It's Jerry. I don't understand why he's here. Didn't it ever occur to you that his presence might be intrusive? Not to mention unnecessary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Since when are friends necessary? That's kind of a shitty thing to say. No, he shouldn't be here. He's like a third wheel. Legend, a legend, a third wheel legend, always in the way. What do you mean calling Jerry a third wheel? He's my friend. He's your friend, too. He says nothing but good things about you. I don't care. This is weird. How are we going to make love tonight with him in the room? Are you serious? Jerry, get in here! What's hey, up, buddy, I'm getting laid tonight. Oh, man, that's great. Yeah. Oh, God, we got to celebrate. I'll go get some beers. Yeah, hey, after this, we got to get you some. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter, babe? No, don't babe me. There's something wrong here, and I don't want to make love to you tonight. Why? Are you bleeding? Oh, my God, no. Listen to you. This is ridiculous. I can't make love to you with that third wheel hanging around. Legend, the legend, the third wheel legend, always in the way. What do you mean calling Jerry a, what, well, a third wheel? Legend, legend, third wheel legend, always in the way. You know, he's in the way, like a third wheel. Legend, the legend, the third wheel legend, always in the way. Second, I am hearing all this talk about a uh, an extra round thingy. But uh, you know, where would we be without those roundies? I mean, uh, tricycles would be bicycles. Who ever heard of a bicycle? That's crazy. <laughs> Look, we need third wheels. We need third wheels. Jerry? Yeah. What's the matter, man? Aren't you going to sing? No. I heard what you were saying about me. 
being a third wheel and all. Maybe I should just leave. No, maybe I should go. I mean, I can't believe this is how I'm spending my honeymoon. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second, honey. Who's to say what a honeymoon should be? I mean, what does the word even mean? Honey and moon? It's nonsense. <laughs> For all we know, we're in Jerry's way. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, the poor guy's been looking forward to this since we got engaged. Yeah. Yeah, you're on to something here. I mean, heck, I'm no dictionary expert, but maybe the word means to charter a boat and send it out with nobody aboard. Hmm. Hey, you know what? Let's all apologize to this boat, and then let's promise never to use the word honeymoon ever again. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right. The tyranny of the word honeymoon is over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Folks, if I may speak, uh, an actor is only as good as his words. And I'd like to introduce the writer of that piece, Peter Kankatankton. Peter. Well, guys, what did you think of the scene? Oh, Peter. I got it. I got exactly what you were trying to say. It was... Thank you, Ken. Jerry? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm not sure if I got the point of it. I thought it was a little too serious at the end, all that stuff about the tyranny of the word honeymoon. What do you mean, too serious? It's absurd. The tyranny of the word honeymoon. It was a joke. Okay. You don't get it, do you, Jerry? <laughs> no, you'll never get it. That scene was about you. Duh. You're the third wheel. Is this about your honeymoon? Ken and I love each other. We are a legally recognized married gay couple. Why won't you leave us alone? Oh, just get out, Jerry. Just leave us the hell alone. I, I can't believe this. I thought we were friends. We were friends. Now, I hate you. We, we, we hate you. Get out. Leave Jerk. alone, Jerry. Get out. You're ugly. Go do whatever you want to do. You do not talk to him that way. <laughs> do not let her hurt you. Get out, you broken down faggot. We apologize for the homosexual content of this last scene. We now join this fiercely heterosexual sketch already in progress. Welcome back to Screwball. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see who our audience chose for you to have sex with. Melanie the waitress. <laughs> so what do you say? You want to have sex with her? That's that's fine. All righty. We'll see you when you're done. <laughs> Remember the rules. Just go have some sex. Okay, let's say hello again to Fred and Beth, our couple from earlier, who just finished up. Well, according to the judges, Fred did. <laughs> Oh, all right, Red. Ooh, that's a strong handshake. How'd it go? Well, Jim, she's truly a beautiful, magnanimous creature. You know, when I saw her, I thought I should take her for a romantic walk, you know, around to the left side of the no, bed. No, no, no. Wait, wait, I... wait a minute, Jim. There was nothing romantic. Oh, sounds like there was some friction before the friction. <laughs> I was trying to be a gentleman about it, you know. A gentleman? Jim, it was awful. I've never met this person before, you know? I mean, the, the judges are sitting there watching us. It was, it was cold. It was ugly. Ooh. I'm ashamed. Well, sounds like it didn't work out too well, but you had sex and we enjoyed hearing about it, didn't we? <laughs> hey, we got to be on the TV. <laughs> okay, that's right. Okay, now the important question. Fred, do you want to have sex with Beth again? I would love to. How about you, Beth? We'll pay for it. No, thanks. Too bad. Well, Fred, you know what that means? We'll give you $20 to masturbate into a cup. Okay, sounds great. Good. All right, thank you for joining us. That's all the time we've got tonight on Screwball. Jim, Jim, I just want to say, you know, I can uh, contribute more to the show. I can come back, you know, because I, I have a very warm engaging personality. You know, I'm an Aries, you know, on the cusp of the Libra Pisces, you know, so I got to, I can quantify, you know, very, very, I have a veracitude, you know, which she can quit to. Boy, that last character David did might be insulting to some people, huh? Well, America, here's your chance to fight back. Just videotape yourself at home complaining about our show and send it in. If we use it, 
we might make you a star, huh? Here's a few we've already received. I have never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever, never. Hello. I'd like to complain about your show. Now, I've never watched your show, nor do I intend to. Because you know what? I don't watch trash. You know why? The place for trash is in the gutter, not my mind. And you know what else I'd like to complain about? The city I live in. They're suing me for putting my trash in the gutter. They say I should put it in a trash can. Well, you know what belongs in a trash can? Your show. Because you know what? It stinks. And you know what else? Get out of my house! What you said I should take you? Get out! Never. Never, never, never. Never, never, You guys are pretty funny. How about if I come down there and kick your asses? How about that? That'd be fucking funny. That'd be fucking hilarious. And guess what? As soon as I get this bad boy off, I'm coming for you. Pull the fucking camera straight. Eight months and 12 days and I'm gonna fucking be there. <laughs> never nev! Noven bond! Ben for Bibri! Furry! Alrighty, that's our winner. Now remember, everybody who sends one in receives a free t-shirt that says official pussy inspector on it. <laughs> So get out your video cameras and have plenty of tape ready because I'm sure you'll find something to complain about in this next scene. Casa San Piazza del Sol La Luna. The house of the place of the sun of the moon. A beautiful home and the current residence of America's most dedicated actor, Borden Grote. For Borden's first role as an extra in a crowd scene, he spent weeks studying crowds, how they walk, talk, and generally crowd around. For a 15-second cameo in Mel Brooks' flop, Bad Man Whatever, he played a doctor, and he actually attended medical school for two years. Now, Borden has taken on his greatest challenge yet. First of all, thank you, Borden, for granting us this interview. Okay. The rumor mills are churning. The film you're currently preparing for involves abuses at a mental institution. Now, word has it that in order to play the lead role as realistically as you can, you have had the frontal lobe of your brain removed and replaced with bubble wrap. Is any of that true? <laughs> All right. My next question concerns the Oscar. Speaking of awards, I met Borden's full-time chef, Fontaine, and watched as he prepared an Oscar-winning lunch. Are you making um, spaghetti and jelly there? Is that what I... Yeah, it's, uh, it's his favorite lately. It's, um... Okay. Very textural. Mm hmm You hear that, Borden? Textural. Spaghetti and jelly. Is that good? <laughs> good. Thank you. After lunch, I got to know Borden's personal secretary, Billy T. Boy, and in the 11 years that you've known Borden, has he changed much, would you say? You know, he is the same Borden from Minnesota that he has always been. All right, slide and turn. Good boy, come on. Slide and turn, slide and turn. Oh, here we go. Hey, 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 come on. Hey, really? Wait, wait, wait. Are we having bad time? Are we having bad time? Ha! Hey, Sai's here. As luck would oh have it, Borden's high-powered agent, Cy Talbot, dropped in just in time for Borden's daily workout. I, 
I can't work out myself. I can't either. It, it takes so much discipline. It, yeah. This is a high impact, full body workout. He works out every back. day? Every day for 17 hours. That's okay. That's why we put the chair there. Hey, look who's here. Man, come outside. Through the evening, celebrities such as soul singing <laughs> sensation Larry Black, ladies, hey y'all, and How hot college doing? comic Blueberry Hi. Head continued arriving. <laughs> Borden's, it seems, is the place to be. Young Hollywood gathers each night for fun and frivolity. But despite the levity, our host seemed lost in thought. And so ended my day with Borden Crow, a man who suffers for his art gladly and softens our suffering by doing so. Oh, ho, ho, hold on. I'm doing a show tonight. <laughs> well, I think it's tonight. I, I should probably write those things down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Black. This is one for the ladies. <laughs> ladies, you know who you are. Men, take it outside. Okay, the men are going to stick around. All right, fine. I forgot. I'm just going to forget you're here. <laughs> All right. Tonight, tonight, we'll make love. No hesitating, just you and me in my bed tonight, tonight, tonight. <laughs> it's gonna be all right, yeah. Tonight, a night that will live in ecstasy. Friday, love day. <laughs> is, it, is it Thursday? Oh, hold, hold on, baby, hold on. Oh, damn it, we were gonna do this tomorrow night. My mistake, baby, I'm sorry. Why do I even buy these things if I'm not gonna check them? <laughs> I need a reminder to look at my reminder. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'll tell you, tonight I've got some, uh, I gotta do some uh, work. Uh, I gotta call some people. <laughs> I'm gonna pencil you in for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, yours and yours alone. Oh, God damn it, my brother's coming in tomorrow. Damn it, I have to pick him up from the airport at noon. Huh? Why did I get all my shit in one place? Some night, tonight, we'll make love. Some night, no more waiting. Ha -ha. No hesitating. Just you and me and my brother and his dog on the couch. God, fuck. Fuck it. I'm singing a song. Hold on a second, baby. What? Who is this? This is your supermodel calling service. My name's Nikki. How would you like to have real supermodels calling you at home? Really? Calling me? That's right. There are thousands of supermodels waiting to talk to you round the clock. Thousands? Clock? Order the supermodel calling service using any major credit card, and soon you'll be getting calls from the world's most beautiful women. Hello? Your name is Ulrika? My name is Andre. You sound sexy. You'll never again be further than a phone call away from a supermodel. Okay, thanks. Bye. Wow. Hello? Alexa? My name is Andre. How are you? That's right. Not just one supermodel will call you, but thousands from around the world are at your fingertips. I can't understand you. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello? Lizette? Once you pay the one-time fee, the calls Nothing. start coming and no. coming. Nothing. Okay, bye. You can run, but you can't hide from supermodels. Two thousand four hundred thousand.
Entrant from Cleveland, Anthony Blades with Supermodel Horror Film. And an interesting note, that film was made for $300 out of film that Anthony carved himself from scrap lumber. <laughs> so uh, let's move on. The next entry in my personal film festival is a gay porn film strip. Why won't you show my movie? <laughs> Please, sir. It's a gay porn film strip entitled Voyage to the Bottom of My Seat. And uh, I said, why won't you show my movie? Sir, you didn't follow the correct procedure. But I don't want to have sex with you. Well, uh, I don't make the rules. Yes, you do. Well, this is neither the time nor the place, all right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's both, man. Look at this program. See? Stage protest right before Fancy Pants. <laughs> fancy Pants? Yeah. That was weird. Well, look, I, I don't... I... Show my movie! Oh. Show it! Oh. Show it! You should sh sh show it! <laughs> What the hell? Oh. 